live. Hi folks, Elaine Marilaco Settleson here with Astrology Mojo. And it's more than just astrology, you know that, right? We're talking about clairvoyance and empathy and empowerment and ways you can become the person you came here to be. So come say hello to me. Let me know that you're here. I have my notes ready. And tell me your birthday too. What's your birthday? I am uh, riding the wave on this Pisces full moon. First Friday the 13th in full moon since the 1800s. Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? Ah, so we've got an exciting show today. We are on part three of our four-part series where we're talking about the transiting planet of Neptune squaring Jupiter. <laughs> Ta-da! Jazz hands. Um, it's going to be fun. And we started off the last two shows, we did Fire Signs, Sun, Rising, Moon, Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. And then we did Earth Sign, Sun, Rising, and Moon. And that uh, entailed uh, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. And I want to check in with Capricorn because we gave uh, Cap, Cap, Rising, Sun, and Moon a little exercise to do. And I want to know if anybody did that exercise. I did. I'm a cap rising. And now today we are talking about the air sun rising and moon signs, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. So Christine is here and hardly slept last night because of the full moon. I slept great. It's hit or miss, right? It depends on the sign that the full moon is in. And uh, sometimes you feel drugged and heavy, and other times you're just like, I can't sleep. I'm giddy. <laughs> well, one of those nights, uh, the other night, the night before on Thursday, my husband couldn't sleep. And then last night, uh, slept really well. So you see how it goes. Hey, Mary's here too, Elizabeth. And so this sun rising moon air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarii, is going to be very interesting. Oh, Vicky has a Libra rising and is a Capricorn. So you see how this applies to so many people. And in case you're wondering what, um, what this looks like, I'm going to show that to you uh, by way of a chart. And But just please, a uh, little housekeeping, please pass along to folks. I will be uploading more videos to my YouTube channel, of course, but let people know that I'm here. Pass it along. Share the love. Monday. Thursday, Saturday, I am here, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific until the clocks change. And then I will uh, let you know about a half an hour difference, I think, for me. Uh, Arizona does not change clocks. We stay put. Everybody else does like a little time dance. Okay, so who else is here? Come say hi to me. Let me know your birthday. We have, we have a Libra. We have a Cancer. We have a Sagittarian. We have a Pisces, a Capricorn. A Taurus. We have a Taurus rising, a Libra rising, a Leo rising. Um, oh, Brittany's an Aquarius moon. Thank you, sweetie. Can't wait to hear. Yeah, me too. Can't wait to say. <laughs> I just got to open the channel spout and let it come out. So um, in our town, if listen, if you live anywhere near Sedona and on the weekends they have craft fairs, at the mall and at strategic places around town and in the village. I love going to the lapidary booth, which uh, Courtney and her husband, Michael run. They just got back from Denver and I went because for the last three days, all I could think about was selenite and I don't have a lot of selenite, but um, I went and I got a huge lamp, big lamp with a little bulb. It's just beautiful. And then she had these coaster discs. And um, so I got this. I don't know if you can see it. Look at that. It's just, it's so beautiful. And I got two of these. And 
selenite you can't put in water to clean i know someone had asked about cleaning crystals um yeah you don't put selenite in water because it's i believe a gypsum base and it will melt so like halite will uh, but it's also used as a cleansing tool so you can use it to heal yourself to heal other crystals you could you know use it uh, to charge them so i'm gonna work with them and play with them and use it as a coaster for my for my drink as I'm doing this reading. Okay, so, ah, uh, who else is here? Come say hello to me. Okay, now Capricorn, Capricorn rising and moon, sun rising and moon, I gave you guys a little exercise. I'm wondering if anybody did it. Um, just to, it was to break up the stuckness of a flow of energy and, and the constraint and the limitations so let me know later if you've did it if, if you've done it eh, eh. <laughs> elizabeth's a gemini rising oh so this applies and on monday the water signs will apply okay so let's just um recap a little bit i want to show you what this square looks like and by the way um the equinox is coming up on the 21st and so then the balance of light today um, light tonight starts to change and this is exactly the day on september 21st 2019 when jupiter squares neptune in transit transiting in the universe exact degree it happened back in january then again in june and now coming up toward d September 21st. And that's why I'm doing this four part series because I want you to be prepared on what to work on so that you can fast track your karma and finish your unfinished business. Now, a few definitions in case you're just joining me and you're unfamiliar. Um, Neptune is a planet. Oh, okay. This is what I tell everyone, right? You might get tired of me saying it but it's necessary that the planets don't make you do anything that we live in a cooperation with the cosmos so that when the planets make a move you feel it and when you make a move the planets reflect that by way of aspects and angles in astrology so basically astrology tells you what time it is so maybe it's time for career or health or solitude spirituality maybe it's time for business contracts uh, you know, it's always time for a lot of things. That's why I like to look very in depth at people's charts and uh, to see what's coming up via the transits. So this isn't about where Neptune is in your natal chart where you were born. This is about where Neptune is transiting in your, in your chart. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Okay, so Neptune is like you can't see beyond the mist. It represents that part of you that is uh, metaphysical, magical, spiritual, poetic, artistic, in denial, um, a little addicted to something. Can be movies, film, television, can be a substance, can be people. You can be addicted to certain types of people who are addicted. Uh, so you have to be very aware of seeing beyond the blur, seeing beyond that part of you that um, is just, you know, too afraid to see sometimes what the reality of the world is, and then to be able to negotiate that. So, uh, and I said it before in the last couple of shows that uh, Neptune ultimately in astrology represents your unfinished earthly business. You came back to finish something. And what was the spiritual promise before you got here then becomes the earthly illusion because it's always out of reach. You can't seem to grasp it. What is that thing? You know, um, for some people that karma relates to uh, doing specific types of uh, work in the world and they have a calling they have that feeling but they just don't have a grasp on how to do business so that's the unfinished business they have to learn how to do that some people it's like this is the lifetime I have a child uh, you know I've got to have a family and 
Um, they may have difficulty, they may need medical assistance, or maybe they have a lot of kids, but they then start to lose their mind because they don't know how to negotiate parenthood. So that's their unfinished business. So, and Jupiter represents the part of us that is expansive, that's benevolent, that just loves, you know, to be magnanimous and generous and, and sometimes overindulgent and loud and boisterous and funny and loves culture and foreign affairs and it's the get up and go. So the way I've structured these things is um, looking at the charts, I'm looking at the houses for each of these air signs today. So before something can get going, something needs to be resolved and I'll look at that via the houses. Okay, so before I get going, um, hello to everyone who's just joined us. We are talking about the transit of Neptune and Jupiter the square that is now coming to a very intense degree on September 21st with which also coincides with the um, equinox so that we're beginning to assess who we are what we need how we can get going so if you are any version of sun rising or moon sign Libra Gemini Aquarius you're really gonna dig this okay so Libra, let's begin. Okay. Before things can get going with contracts or the law or travel or international business, even publishing, um, something about your health and, and uh, if it's not your health, then it's the planning, the zoning, the community needs to get harmonized and that and so we're looking at two types of work and the work can be the work that you want to be doing but the work that you're doing now and they're at cross purposes or the work that you're building on you, maybe you're starting a new business or you just started a new job i have a client who literally libra rising just started a new job and is feeling it out and so now, and is tentative, admittedly, because the last uh, business, same industry, but the last um, place of business was really not great and uh, kind of shook her. So, um, and another Libra Rising is like inundated with so much work that, you know, the control to do it all and not being able to delegate because that's the issue. You know, so when you can harmonize the work that you want to be doing, Libra, Libra rising, Libra moon, how you want to proceed, um, uh, and, and what I'm talking about is your idealism. You know, you might say, well, I'm working on this thing, and when it's perfect, I'll get it out there. But, <laughs> okay, um, then we need to examine your definition of perfect, right? Uh, does this make sense? Oh, so Shelby is also a Libra rising like um, Vicky and some of my other clients that are, I'm hoping, watching this. So, uh, and it can relate to, okay, so the houses involved are houses three in astrology and then um, house six. So, uh, you know... I think if you're able to move to a place of, um, well, I want to say smoothing out like the wrinkles where you're, you don't have to be in control all the time and you don't have to be um, doubting. Uh, deep down, a lot of times uh, Libra, sun rising or moon is waiting for the sucker punch because of the intensity of the relationship to the masculine parent and um and being driven so now you know you are and it doesn't have to be a negative relationship it's just there was an intensity that propelled you into being driven and so you're driven to get something done and when you harmonize the uh procedure even how you work you know let's let's look at your office space or maybe you're setting up a home office or maybe you're looking at feng shui to incorporate um, proper flow of energy. You know, your health is really important. So the clues are going to be when you're out of balance, 
and out of harmony, Libra, Libra rising, Libra moon, this is very key for you. You are guided by Venus and that means you can be so stubborn. That means you could be so driven and so tenacious and you won't give it up. You won't let it go, but then your body has a reaction. So the health gets involved and it can be adrenals. It can be you just have a lot of anxiety or it can be you need to start working out and consistently and dual fold. I would say two kinds of working out, something that gets the heart racing and something that calms you down. So Pilates, uh, high intensity training, uh, you know, hiking, walking, grounded in the earth and nature and then, you know, jumping on a trampoline. So uh, some of you may run. Uh, one of my clients is a Libra rising and runs and, and then does yoga. So you want to look at um, how to balance where you're going with your trajectory and the business that you want and um, speaking and communicating and the publishing that you want to do and and uh, the communication starts on the inside first, right? It's how, what you think, and you might think, oh yeah, no, they don't, they don't sell those on that side of town. Well, how do you know? Why are you being so stubborn? How do you, well, maybe they didn't two years ago, but maybe they do now. You know what I mean? So it's time to open up the channels and then start incorporating teamwork. Ideally, teamwork is gonna get you going. Does that make sense? Okay. And pay attention to your health, <laughs> please. <laughs> I hope this is helping. Let me just check in real quick. Yep, Libra rising, Aquarius moon. Teresa's here. Hi, Shelby. And also with Libra rising, you know, sometimes in an industry regarding health and community service, that can be a healing industry. It can be a legal industry. You know, you want to champion a cause. Um, you've got uh, clients or patients. Um, maybe you run a class, uh, that's for Zumba, you know, and you want to get people healthy. Sometimes the ideas that you have need to be concretized, but it falls outside the norm of how other people expect you to be doing it. Oh my God, she's overweight and she's teaching, um, a class, uh, you know, an exercise class. So you're going to to start to buck the system now. And so to be true to yourself, to finish this unfinished business is be true to your health first and the image that you express. And if you're talking about, um, you know, meditating and then, you know, you're frantic and scattered, there's an incongruency. Okay. Does that make sense? So, um, you need to be whole within and recognize the things that set you off balance. And once you do, then you can realize, oh, I don't need to blame, it's not about them. I got thrown and that was my sucker punch. So let's stop expecting the rug to get pulled out from under. Libra, Libra sun, rising and moon, okay? And then you're gonna harmonize the work thing and you're really gonna take off uh, in a new direction with work. Okay, Gemini sun rising and moon and you may have a combination you know um libra rising gemini moon libra sun gemini rising you know so this is really going to uh, impact you does this make sense folks it's making sense let me know uh christine says caught a bug i feel like i will i will drown in my own uh stuff <laughs> you had worked worked me to watch out for this oh i warned you to watch out for this in a reading you gave me well, thank you for the validation. And now I want you to just pay attention to your body and the food that you're eating and what you're ingesting and how it can produce, you know, wheat can produce inflammation and create more mucus. So you want to look at the membranes in your body and what can, uh, you know, look at some Chinese uh, acupuncture, acupressure points you can do for yourself as well, Christine. Okay, Gemini, sun rising and moon. Okay, so... When the vow that you made to the world or to the masculine parent is recognized or healed, that's when you go to new places with partnerships, marriage, uh, high-end clients, business partners. Okay, so let's say this in another way, Gemini, sun rising and moon. 
the masculine parent is where the karma is. So if you feel like you idolize dad, dad was at the top of his game or their game, depending on if, you know, whoever the masculine, the masculine parent, you could have been raised by two women. So the masculine parent, the one who was predominantly the authority for you, um, the contract or the vow that you made before you got here with this person was, this person said, I am not going to let up. I am, I'm not going to be easy. I, I am going to have strong opinions. And you're going to need to be able to stand up and be counted. You know, that could be difficult. I have a, a, a client whose um, father was in... Um, a political arena. And this person, this client uh, from long ago, had difficulty um, talking <laughs> to her father because, you know, he, he knew everything. He was very smart and he, you know, was constantly telling her what to do. So she had to find control in her own world and then started controlling the people in her world. And that didn't bode well in relationships. So the houses we're looking at in astrology for Gemini, sun rising and moon are the 10th house. That is the uh, place of fame, notoriety, the career that you have, the work that you want to be doing, um, the competition, depending on other planets, but the competition that you feel is uh, hindering or helping you. And then ultimately, it's your relationship to the masculine parent and the karma and the business that needs to get finished really is to make peace with this person. Even if you had a great relationship, now it's looking at your career. And you could be retired and say, I don't have a career. It's your life direction. Where do you feel in control? Where do you need to take back your power so that you are validated for your, your truth and for your information? A Gemini, sun, rising, moon. And then once you do, you can look at a personal relationship to a spouse, to a high-end client, to your fans, and to a business partner and say, now I'm ready because I feel equal. I don't feel like I need to be in control all the time. I don't feel like I'm the one who has to come up with the answer. It's more equalized. Does this make sense? It's very important that this get taken care of. Um, so Gemini, when you're ready to move to a new place in a partnership and in a venture, you need to also show vulnerability. But Let's say you were younger and showed vulnerability in the presence of the masculine parent and were shot down for it or were made fun of or were made to feel small or invalidated. You know, there's a part of you that doesn't trust. So the ideal thing to do really uh, to take back your power is to look at the vow that you've made to the world. What is that vow? Like, I want to be able to help the world do this. And the world can be six people in your community. It doesn't have to be a million people. You don't have to stand on stage like Tony Robbins, okay? So your community, your world, who is your world? What does it consist of? And, and maybe you don't know. So um, this is the question to answer so that you can start to realize, oh, you know what? I never did that thing because my father kept telling me, or my masculine parent kept telling me, yeah, I was doing it wrong, or it wasn't enough, or I should be stable and uh, find my power in a very secure position. Or maybe the masculine parent was completely absent, not even there. And you're thinking, I got to be the masculine person in my world, whether you're a man or a woman. I ha I'm the one who's got to do it. Right? So as we harmonize Gemini, sun rising and moon, your relationship to this parent, and this parent might be ill, perhaps they're passing away, perhaps they've just passed, and you're grieving something, the regret. You know, you never want to leave this world with regret, okay? And that's for anybody. But Gemini, sun rising and moon, this is a really great time for you to, to step into your power by letting go of control. I know it sounds like an oxymoron. 
The best way to step into your power by, by releasing control is to focus on your greatest joy. And if someone is in need of help and they're not asking you, don't give. Start to shore up your energy and realize in a, a little bit more Zen fashion, I need to be a little bit more present with my why. Why do I feel the need to control that person? Why do I feel the need to direct that person? Why do I feel the need to do it all? Okay. And then when you start to harmonize and heal that, then you can move to new places with partnerships, spouse, high-end client, fans. And if you've got any competitors, you can smooth down the competition. You can actually learn from the competition. You can actually work with the competition for mutual goals. All right. Does that make sense? It's going to take a little sip. Is this helping you? Please let me know. Please do. Ah, okay, so if you're just joining us, we're talking about the transiting planets of Neptune squaring Jupiter and how it's not doing anything to you, but it's just a reflection of what you need to open up, see, resolve some unfinished karmic business before you can move forward with your goals. Okay, does that make sense? Elizabeth says, well, thank you. Sage says, ah, I assume this is for Christine. Plant-based food helps. Check out Anthony Williams' books and videos. Yes, excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, also, Christine, you just, and anyone else who, who um, has any kind of congestion um, in the lungs, in the head, in the sinuses, that has a lot to do with confusion about future direction. So you need to nurture, nurture a little bit more. Okay. Now Aquarius, sun rising and moon. Wow. Okay. This is, um, this goes to the heart of some matters. And when you validate your self-worth, we're looking at house two, second house in astrology, um, your positioning with friends, groups, associations, is supported. So let's look at it another way. The second house in astrology, Aquarius, sun rising and moon, deals with money, deals with income earned, deals with resources. Now what's a resource? Time, energy, um, cash, support, right? It's also the house, the second house in astrology relates to security and values what you really value. And so if you start to value who you are, Aquarius, sun, rising, and moon, if you start to validate your own expertise, existence, and uh, even whether or not you're making money, that's another topic, but the incoming can open when you allow yourself the stamp of approval, okay? The stamp of approval is, hey, I love what I do, and I do it well, and, and it's not, I do it better than they do. How come they're making more money? It's not that, because that harbors a resentment. So when you validate yourself, and you value who you are, what happens is you make a connection to your joy, and your bliss opens up and that creates an energy and a frequency folks this is all doesn't matter what sign or element you are we are talking about the frequency of abundance okay look at behind me look at that that's all frequency that's an actual nasa photo thank you very much nasa and uh if i haven't mentioned it recently it is called the uh nebula antennae something or other i don't remember <laughs> oh, whoops <laughs> So Aquarius, sun rising and moon, when you start to really validate who you are and in, in your input and charge what you're worth and feel deserving of that and know how to put a boundary on someone says, puts a pile of, you know, papers on your desk and says, oh, before the weekend's out, can you finish this up? And you say, sure. Uh, okay. And you're all ready to go on a weekend vacation or something, you know, and you're like, yeah, okay, sure. I could do it. But then it becomes a habit. And then there's no boundary in place. And then you're giving 
you're just you're giving without the flow of getting back the allowing yourself to receive isn't there that means you're invalidating yourself aquarius sun rising and moon now let's say you just got a job and you're so excited about it um and when you have an idea on the job aquarius sun rising or moon and you think well there's a hierarchy there's a level of, you know, I have to go to my supervisor, then that supervisor goes to the manager, then the manager goes, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you don't want to jump over heads. No, um, because that can create tension in the group, right? We're looking at groups and associations who can support you. So then let's look at the group. Who is the group that you are surrounding yourself with? Are they jealous? Are they competitive? Are they non existent? Are you totally solo? Well, there needs to be a group. There needs to be some participation in an arena where you're, there is give and take, where there is sharing, where you're getting back and giving. Aquarius, sun rising, and moon, okay? So when you can share with the group what they need, ask them, what, what do you need? Uh, we got a big project coming up, and uh, Joe told me that uh, you, know, you were stacked ties or something I could take off your plate. And they go, oh my gosh, wow, where'd you come from? I thought you were in that department and you say, I am, but it ties into what you're, you know, and so then you collaborate and then you look at your self-worth because suddenly you're just doing the job and somebody mentions how great you were with the group and it gets, comes around, right? What goes around comes around. And then suddenly you get a pat on the back or you get a call from the supervisor who's above the other supervisor and says, wow, we really want to, you know, express our gratitude and uh, thank you so much. And the work was great. And, you know, this happened to my husband, Aquarius Moon, working in a group situation, helping everybody out, giving suggestions at first thinking, I don't want to go over the super's head um, or my manager's head or the group manager's head, um, but brought it up. Nothing got done went to the next place, and then went to the hierarchy. And they were like, what? Blown away. And everybody was in congruency and supporting one another. So, and, and let's say you don't work. Let's say you're a mom. Um, and you think, oh, well, uh, I really want to be part of that uh, PTA thing or the kids uh, after school play or the soccer, blah, blah, whatever. And so the more that you participate with the group without expectation of getting back, that, that's the caveat. It's without expectation because you might be thinking, well, if I put in my karmic dues, you know, I'll get back. Y yeah, we're not. No, there's enough of everything to go around Aquarius, sun rising and moon. You want to be authentic and genuine about really giving yourself kudos for the work that you're doing, how you're doing it, and why are you doing it? Because it feels good, because you're making money. Right? So consider these things that when you're working with the group situation, and this can also mean working with a mentor. It doesn't have to be a, a big group. It can be a mentor. And you're ready to go forward with publishing, writing. Uh, you're ready to go forward with um, something magical, mystical, metaphysical, uh, something entertaining, something that, you know, needs fine tuning, but you can make money from it eventually, but you're putting in a lot of time, a lot of extra energy, a lot of, you know, oh my gosh, is this ever going to get off the ground? Well, if you're listening to all the things that I'm talking about and you coordinate these things into, I'm really worth it, Aquarius, sun rising and moon. And um, I want to give my support to the group, but not do more and not do less. It's got to be congruent. It's got to be equal, right? <laughs> you got to work together. And then suddenly what opens up, and this is all going to come to a very intense place around the 21st and that whole week of September 21st, 2019. So if you're listening to this in a replay, the Neptune square Jupiter energies are coming to its final third pass, January, 2019. June 2019, and now September 21st, which coincides with the equinox. So the autumnal equinox. So what are we doing? What are we looking at? We're looking at finishing up some of this business. You know, the exercise that I gave to Capricorn the other day, I did for myself. 
And I thought, oh my gosh, this is fun. I have to get back into these morning exercise writing uh, because I am also an author. So you have to look at the work that you're doing, Aquarius, Sun, Rising, and Moon, who you're doing it with, validate yourself, allow the money to come, and then be wise about it. Learn about money and value. If you value that organic apple because you know it's about your health and it costs a dollar more than the one laden with pesticides, don't you think you're worth it? <gasps> I do. Cheers to the air sign, sun rising and moons. <laughs> All right, does this make sense? Has this helped people? We're going to be talking again on Monday for the fourth part, the water signs, sun rising and moon. That's Cancer, Pisces, and uh, who did I miss? Scorpio. <gasps> I will never forget a Scorpio. Is this helping? Let me know. Thumbs up. Let me know your experience. And then um, if you're new to me, you can also, I'm going to be uh, uploading some more uh, YouTube videos this weekend, but you please subscribe and share the love. And I'll just post that right here in the comment section. And uh, once you subscribe to the YouTube channel, then uh, you'll get a little bell. And when you click on that little bell, it's a notification that lets you know when new fresh content is being uploaded. We're very excited. Also, if you don't have your uh, astrological chart, you can get it on the house, our gift to you. And let me just post that in the comment section as well. Okay, so um, when you get your life chart, it comes with a legend and also a specific video I made r just for your sun sign, which is exciting. So you can look and see where Pisces is in your chart and you can see where Jupiter and Sagittarius is in your chart. And both of these signs right now, these planetary aspects and angles, they're immutable signs, which means changeable, which means more flexible, just like Mrs. Incredible. You want to be flexible. <laughs> okay, so um, Shelby says, so excited for the Taurus book one day. What Taurus book? My Taurus book? Your Taurus book? <laughs> you mean my historical fiction fantasy, 10 Steps of the Bull? That's one. Are you writing a Taurus book? I would, please let me know. Sage, you are so helpful and inspirational. Thank you. I'm so happy. Brittany, three hearts. I love it. And, um, okay, cool. So go out, have a beautiful weekend, take this information in. We're moving towards September 21st where the energies are going to be even more specific as we move from Virgo to Libra in the constellations. Okay. It's cool. I'll be back on Monday, everyone. And we'll be talking about the water signs, agua fresca. And uh, I'm going to go play with my, my new selenite crystal. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, have a beautiful Pisces moon weekend. Make it magical. Oh, our kid, our cosmic kids texted and said, what are some good things to do in a Pisces full moon? And I said, hmm, well, for the weekend, you want to go mystical, magical, spiritual. Um, get a tarot reading. Uh, dress up, do some drama, go to a play, go to a poetry reading, uh, do something, do some writing or do some artwork. And our, they, our kid went to um, the Comic-Con dressed up as their, uh, Aaliyah and her boyfriend went as their favorite uh, Japanese characters on a show. And it was hysterical. I was like, perfect. That's a perfect thing to do in a Pisces full moon weekend. So get magical, mystical, romantic, feel good. Watch the extremes and watch those addictions. Just saying. All right. I'll see you guys. Oh, wait, there's more comments. <laughs> Rhonda says, you are still live. Hey, I caught the tail end. Well, you can watch the replay because it does apply to you, Ms. Gemini. Um, Shelby says, the one to follow the historical fictionaries book. Loved it. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. Um, happy card. <laughs> you want a happy card? I didn't do them the other time. Hang on. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> My hair is sticking to me. Happy cards. <sighs> and by the way, these were given to me as a gift. Uh, they were written by Lara Solara, Dana DePoint, and Marlene Chapman. 
the Universal Law Cards, and they're not for sale anywhere. They were at a show my husband went to, some kind of workshop or show, and he got them for me for a long time ago, and I've just been using them. So now I'm going to ask all of our friends, lightworkers, beings on and off planet to help me pick a card for everyone's Pisces full moon weekend. How's that? What to focus on, the best way to guide. Oh, this one is like itching its way out. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is so perfect for Pisces, okay? Service. That would be service with a smile. Would you like uh, cream with that? Do you want sugar with your coffee? Okay, Neptune and Pisces, their whole gig is about service. And so wherever you see Neptune in your chart and Pisces, whatever cusp house it sits on, it is about service in that area of your life. Now, service means not at the sake of yourself. No. Service means how can you give to someone in your world, first to yourself, I love who I am, I am committed to, I, to who I am and who I am becoming uh, by letting go of the negative things that stop me and sabotage me from growing then how can I take this service to the next level? And that is the whole reason every single being, thank you for this card, uh, is on this earth. We are here in service, um, not for personal gain or agenda. We are here to help one another grow and transform. So who can you, who can you help today? Not at the sake of yourself and not for any personal agenda. Smile at someone, uh, donate a dollar at the local kid's car wash, you know, <laughs> how can you donate some of your old clothes and stuff? What can you do to be of service first to yourself and then to others, but not at the sake of yourself? That was a beautiful card. And so apropos for a Pisces full moon weekend. All right, folks, I'll be back on Monday. Be well, be sparkly. You are.